recording this week's top 10 from the airport lounge in Toronto. Now, normally I sit in a cubicle way in the back where I'm away from other people, the noise and the traffic so that I can focus and get my work done before I board my airplane. But like so many of your offices, the lounges have become hoteling desk space. So today I'm sitting at a long table, which looks an awful lot like a kitchen island, and I'm not protected from the sounds of others, and they are listening to me record this too. Our top 10 this week is about maintaining focus for your in-office days. Now, many offices have moved to similar working stations where it's hard to hide or find a quiet place to work. Many are complaining that they can't get as much work done working from the office as compared to working from home. So let's share our top 10 tips for focus at work. Our first tip was shared by dozens of you, noise-canceling earphones. Some of you shared that you listen to music or podcasts, but most of you don't listen to anything at all. Just the ear pods in your ears or the headphones indicates to others that you're listening to something other than them, so they tend not to engage you. Now, I personally have really weird ears and I find that earbuds are quite painful for me. So while this tip works for a lot of people, it doesn't work for everyone. And while I'm working in this lounge, none of these people around me are engaging with me, but they're all very loud and distracting me. So me wearing earbuds or headphones would actually make no difference in this environment. I know that's the same for some of you as well. Now, Dana Hoffman from Cleveland, Ohio says that she likes to play elevator music in her office as sort of white noise and it stops her from hearing outside distractions. I know some of you like the radio, but that white noise really does absorb sound. Number three comes from Diana Webster Rockwell from New York. Now, Diana reminds us that eye contact is permission to speak. So even if someone just says hello, they have distracted you. And eye contact often encourages people to kind of stop and chat. So if you can, change your layout move your chair or angle it so it's not easy to make eye contact at all. Now the table I'm sitting at right now in the lounge faces out the window and there's no one I can make eye contact with and that suits me just fine for my focus. Number four is from Michelle Morford from Maryville, Washington. Michelle says that some offices use red green like indicators as a visual representation of your busy level. So much like the lights on your team status, you can use, say, colored solo cups or check on Amazon as there's a few good options that you can use for visual status symbols to say not right now or now's okay. Now, Joan Burge from Las Vegas, Nevada, joined our conversation again. Thanks so much, Joan, to share that sometimes we need to put away our own mobile phones so that we can focus. So if you must have your phone at the workstation, at your workstation, you can keep it in work mode so that only certain contacts come through and silence all the things that are non-work related. Now, statistically, we interrupt ourselves 44% of the time. So we can't block cast blame on everyone else all the time because sometimes we are the guilty party of breaking our own focus. Leslie Hartwell from Rapid City, South Dakota brings us number six. Leslie says that she likes to pick days that when she works from home or works from the office based on the amount of focused work that she needs to do. So her office days are the ones that she feels she doesn't need that full focus. From Mississauga, Ontario, Maria Gasmia says that she walks into the office on office days with a very focused and very full to-do list. She needs to get it all done, so she keeps her focus on the goal. Number eight comes from Lynn DeLuca from Akron, Ohio. Lynn says that it is impossible to stay fully focused at work, so she relies on doing what she can quickly and then getting back to that list. And to rely on the notes that you write yourself so that when you get a focused minute, you can save time by reading the note you wrote to remind yourself where you were. Little cheat sheets, really, to help you regain your focus quickly. Sheila Brown from Victoria, BC, says that even though you have in-office days, if you can, stagger your hours so that you have as much time in the office when people aren't there. Now, that could mean going to work very early or very late but certainly taking lunch at a different time helps give you a little bit more focus time too. And my favorite tip, number 10, comes from Diane Roberts from England. Diane says that her top tip is to make your in-office day on 
Friday because no one else is there. You've done your duty to show up in the office, but you're all alone because everybody wants to work on from home on Fridays. And she's not wrong, is she? Naturally, all of these tips require your own discipline to enforce and implement them all. Focus has never been easy at work and our new working dynamics, whether it is hoteling office space or anything different has challenged what we know as normal. So we all have to adapt to and good luck.